in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we must be guided through strategic teachings. Strategic teachings. Now, teachings are like, like paint brushes. You are able to, the artist, before a painting happens on, a, on the whole board and all of that, the artist already has an idea of what he wants. But he needs the medium of the brush and the colors and he begins to play out what is in his mind there is there is something in the mind of god for you in 2015 hallelujah and i'm just like an artist walking in partnership with the holy spirit to make sure that the exact picture that is in the mind of our father will be made manifest in our life this year in the name of jesus christ so tonight's teaching is really going to challenge us um And help us to be better people, more effective in every sense. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our status is changing. It's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. Status is changing. No more decline. We're on our way to better day. Prophesy, that's what is happening to us in the spirit. Status is changing. It's no more decline. We're on our way. Turn to your neighbor and prophesy. Tell him my status is changing. Status is changing. We're on our way, on our way, on our way to better day. Listen, listen to me. There is nobody who ever won the Olympics by mistake. Are you getting me? Those illusions do not exist. Every dimension of success, be it spiritual, be it financial, in every sense is strategic and intentional. Hallelujah. Nobody, 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 there is no successful person who cannot show you the formula, who cannot show you the pathway he followed. Hallelujah. You may, not, you may not see the full picture right now. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, it will not take long. There is a kind of grace that when you sit under, it implicates you. It will not take long. Something will burst open it's like you are blowing a balloon you know how you keep blowing a balloon a time comes it doesn't matter what it is it just cannot take it and i perceive in my spirit that we're getting to that point i've been singing this song it's not a special number sometimes some songs help you articulate seasons 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 hallelujah I sleep with this song. I wake up with it. It's my prayer. And I know that there are certain people. 
some mantles have long waited for you you see and and there are there are shoes that many of us will step into you will be amazed i hope you know that i'm not a politician when i stand to speak i'm not this is not a manifesto this is a communication of what the spirit is saying there are certain levels of graces that people will step into just know this brothers and sisters there is no mistake about success at any level there is no mistake there is no mistake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please pray in one minute and say, Lord, no distraction tonight. Give me such an unusual ability to listen. An unusual ability to be focused. Inside and outside. Even if you have to sit on the fence, even if you have to stand, don't worry. Just pay your price now. Only a foolish athlete complains during the times of discipline. Only a failure looks for comfort during the time of training. The Bible says there's no man that worried who will entangle himself with civilian affairs. Humble yourself and submit yourself to the dealings of the spirit and see how mighty you will become. I don't care what the limitations are. Take your eyes away from them. hallelujah now i want you to sing this song as a prophecy sing it to yourself i'm on my way listen nobody in your family may have crossed that line before but as far as you know god is leading you there is a path it says there is a path which no foul knoweth. the whelps of the lion has not gotten there some of you as ordinary as you look just let the word of god finish its course in your life i'm on my way on my way i'm on my way to better day what the failure has been no matter what the limitations are prophesy challenge your fears I'm on my way on my way on my way, on my way. I'm on my way Let me talk to you the man who wrote this song do you know how the song came about he was blind are you hearing me he was blind and one time a doctor looked at him and said this is your condition i can do something about it and he was surprised you mean my eyes can open and he began to pray and talk to the lord and the holy spirit told him the meaning of that is that your status is about to change yeah that's how he wrote the song he was not just a musician that so this can change that once upon a time everybody looks at you in your family and thinks you are just one of those bunch of failures but you come up from another route that no man has seen and you tell them i may look small now but there is a hand that is holding me i may have made all kinds of mistakes in the past it's easy to judge me by my mistakes of the past but there is a hand holding me it's true that Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He didn't die forever. While others were talking about his death, he had already resurrected. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way That the doors that refuse to open to you must open in this season. There's no more decline. Father, in the name of Jesus, take us higher. We are praying this from the depths of our heart. Take every one person from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from 
grace to grace. From grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm led to lead you in just one prayer. Say, Lord, make me successful. I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayers. Pray it. Not for your neighbor. Just say it. Make me. Don't say I want to be successful. That's not a wise prayer. Make me. Please just pray. Whether you understand what I'm saying or not, just follow what we're doing. Take your eyes away from what you are not. Take your eyes. Just say, Lord, make me successful. By every standard. We're on our way, on our way. Hallelujah. 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 Seven years ago, I said this. These were my exact words. I said, We will all be successful. And the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. Seven years ago. I said this and I have not stopped saying it. This is a revolution. You may not look like it. But let me tell you, don't play games with the Holy Spirit. Once he holds you, he will make a wonder. He turned the lives of ordinary men. Forget about what men are saying about you. My Bible is full of the archives of the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Some of us ladies may be standing here, you look weak, you look like a failure, forget about it. Just let my God, the one that can pick a man from a dunghill, pick a man from a dunghill. One more time, say, Lord, make me successful. Against all odds, Kabbala Kataya. When all is said and done, I will be standing. Some of you have been named like Jabez. That all you've brought to those around you is sorrow. But don't give up. Don't give up. It doesn't take long. In spite of the limitations. I may not know what to do. But I submit myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's get to the business of tonight. The training may be hard today, but you will thank me tomorrow. Believe me. This is, it's not, it's not a way that has just been discovered. It's always been there. But the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it. See, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level you are now. 
it doesn't matter what is wrong just pay attention to God give him time and see what he will make out of your life hallelujah tonight I'm teaching really more as a life coach if I would put it that way I want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies and I want to challenge us the focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions but then um, my talk is to everybody but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year say amen, amen. so before we start all the gentlemen rise aside from our elders prof please sit down but every gentleman rise don't laugh rise we are not playing games please the teaching has started if you are not sure what you are stand up hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus i will be successful regardless of where i am now regardless of what i do not know now I make up my mind that my world will celebrate me I refuse to fail it's a decision that I've made I refuse to fail I declare that my family my sphere of influence and God will be proud of me God bless you please sit down First Corinthians 13 verse 1. Please, everybody write. Especially the men. Whether you are standing, even if you are sitting on a tree, get a piece of paper this night and write. You know, I've told us when you come, especially for those of us who are new, please get a good notebook or something. Um, make sure you are writing. One of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life please listen carefully pay attention the dynamic nature of life life is in phases and at certain periods in our lives we are compelled to experience what we call transitions everybody say transitions um, in in biology or primary science they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects right it starts from what egg lava some of you got zero you still will get zero today after many years from eggs some of you are saying adult how can it be that hmm? and so we see that there are what transitions and at every stage the rule is different hallelujah at every stage now, for us humans, there are phases of transitions. You start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood, right? And then you get into teenage. And from teenage, people say young adult. I've, I've told you my position in those things. I don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child. Whether you are young or old is irrelevant. Adults and from adults... It continues like that and at the end of your life you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity so one of the challenges watch this and I truly thank God for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry what I call a balanced growth my obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of Christ right I attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of Christ. Maybe it's because of the apostolic office, but I hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other. Right? So, I don't want to raise people who are spiritual, tongue-talking people, but are broke failures in life. And on the other hand, I don't want to raise people who will build houses, be mighty people, and go to hellfire. Are you getting me? I don't want a situation where 
all the brothers are praying in tongues but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married the father looks at you and says young man what is your name say my name is, is christian say uh huh what, what what difference does that make what are you here for he say i saw a flower i say you a flower where you know but there are essentials that if we do not address you see part of the spirit of leadership not just being a man of god leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives are you following me now if i go to a congregation where i'm talking to professionals there is my approach my examples right and my communications become different if i'm teaching in a children's class you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest you are, you are spoiling those children you're supposed to be teaching them how to press into god you know all of that and you cannot be talking to um say grand people of 70 80 years and you are talking to them and you know saying certain things so part of leadership and and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics not just the art of teaching but the ability to communicate right we live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked there are many preachers who are asked who are answering questions nobody is asking so while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the spirit is doing we must also be able to transit the body of christ the church is an institution right an institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies and part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of christ become successful and relevant even societally i was saying it in the leaders meeting and i said look my project this year among other things is to trust god that as this rain falls rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time is that true so that rain will fall on us in the name of jesus but then just just prophesying and saying the name of jesus be successful is a mirage you've done it for years nothing happened success is not an impartation there is nowhere in the bible where you impart success you can you can receive impartation of wisdom you can impart all of this but the bible says they are life to those who find them not to those who wish praise the lord are we there 13 verse 11 not 1 11 when i was a child that means when I was at a season of my life called childhood. Are you following me now? Certain things happened in my life at that point. Number one, I did what? My conversations were childish. I spoke like a child. And, and nobody, you don't rebuke a child. If we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say, say something. And he says, I want sweet. You can't flog him. He's speaking as a child. That is the reality within his age range. And it helps us know that the child is correct. If you call a little child and looks at you and says, where is my wife? Automatically, you know he has been watching nonsense. Either house helps or people have, 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 have raped his mind and transited him to realms that he's not supposed to have gotten there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, there are seasons I speak like a child. So, you know a child first by conversation. Second, I understood mindset i had the mentality of a child my understanding was childish some group of um some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together wrote different letters and gave me and I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter. And these children will not let me rest. So today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service. If you write me a letter and I don't reply it, you, you as an adult, you can't come and pin me. I tell you, look, my brother, the reality, but these ones don't care. They wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back. If we tell them now, next week, all of you come here you are going to we are carrying you to where 
a place where we go and play, or even Father Christmas, or Father February, or Father whatever, is coming here. They will come dressed and happy. They don't want to know where you get the money from. They don't care. The cost dimension of life does not apply to them. They don't think cost. They only think reality. You told me you will buy me sweet. Whether you are stealing the money, whether the shop is open or not, where is my sweet? You said you are buying me a car. Where is it? Even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point, he believes that a car is coming. So I understood like a child. Right? Number three, I thought like a child. So those things, are they characterize certain seasons. But then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same place. Whether you are prepared or not, sooner or later, transitions begin in our lives. Right? I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go. Many years ago, I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said, Jesus Christ, who would have known that that little boy playing around? You see that? See the guys, see some of you touching your face and saying, this is beard. Am I joking? When did he... Welcome to transition. I remember, I remember when, I, when, I, when I was in secondary school, I think it was just one or two. They were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so... They were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that. But then, these guys, it looked like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say, how far? They just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure it's um, a nice Bab in this and make sure it's the type that will attract the ladies. But now, when you go, you say, are you there? As they are babbing, they say what? Just, just keep lowering. You don't even know what. You don't know what the name of the style you want. Just say start. Start. Whatever it looks like as you proceed, I'll tell you whatever adjustments you make. Some of you even finish babbing and they say cab. Say, cab what difference does it make? Carving. Transitions. Are you following me now? Now, whether you like it or not, you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once. For instance, you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free. And then when you transit and forget you have grown, what you said yesterday and people kept quiet, you will say it tomorrow and they will slap you. Is that true? Because a transition has happened. A mistake you made and God kept quiet as if he didn't see it. You make it two years later, you will pay for it dearly. So our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what I want to share very briefly. There are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives. Never forget these five areas. Number one is your spiritual life. The first area you must focus your spiritual life. Talks about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your passion about the things of God. Your passion about the house of God. Your passion about spiritual activities. Your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life. Where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life. It will start messing up your life. Now look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents, 
did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he walking? Yes. Where? He's walking with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so, once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink? Eh, once in a while, smoking. I only saw him smoke once. Ah, but it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear, that you must focus on spiritual success. It's, it's a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ your understanding of spiritual things. I will never, never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and serious with God with traceable evidences of transformation. Traceable. Traceable. You, you, not, you, can't, you can't say you love God and then we can't see the sign. God is not a, God is not a herbalist. You love God, you've walked with him, there must be a traceable evidence. Number two, finance. Everybody say finance. All the men say finance. Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, it may not show now, but as transition happens, you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wealth. Finance defines wealth, abundance, financial freedom. Very important. I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God, but they are broke. Is not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a Red Sea in front of you. Right? The Red Sea. Is, and that Red Sea now is, is, is not Red Sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now you are standing before a Red Sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? Say, what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really? What did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over, the, or they'll hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good. Right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job, good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. 
They've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy, I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Ah, whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in, born again or not born again. Are you seeing now? Transition. So many other factors that you are not aware of coming. You get married to the man and all of a sudden the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transition. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level. Because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different. When 50 members come, out of those 50 girls, at least four or five wicked people, they are, they've been, your, your, your leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming. That means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, <laughs> everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel didn't rebuke her. He took time to explain. Because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself. And the people God will bring under your care. If you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four, very quickly. Your career or your professional life. You must pay attention to it. Or generally speaking, your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you're a liability in your workplace. You're a liability in your office. You're a liability in your corporation. They will check you out. No matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must... Focus on the area of your career, the area of your professional life. Praise the Lord. And then your assignment, generally speaking. And the last area is the area of relationships and associations. Five areas you must pay attention as you transit, even in this season. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations. You can impact people. You can leave a legacy. This is what God wants for us. 
and my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance where we are anointed, we are casting out devils, but then we are tied down financially or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell, right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen, any pastor, any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it? Listen to me. If stand up Zoe and Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader when that happens. Bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam, and you wake up to find out you are a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You will be arguing, I want to marry. Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail, fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare they are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, she da, 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 da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And he said, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. As if what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? 
people play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So, we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, on our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. Please write very quickly why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Write why the reasons. Reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason. There is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you. She says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. Lack of mental transition. Lack of mental transition. They are growing older, but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons to understand the demands, the responsibilities. Lack of mental transition. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 said, When I was a child, spoke like a child, understood like a child, and he said, I thought like a child. But then he said something. He said, Now that I am a man, what happened? He said, I lay aside. I throw away childish things. So many of us have become men and women, but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old. Is that true? So although you are married, you are finding out that you are a big child. There is a lot of childishness happening. In your office, you are seeing childishness. That inability to transit mentally. To match the transition that is happening in your life. Mindset. And there are three aspects we we'll deal with under mindset. Number one is dependency mentality. Dependency mentality. Oh, God is speaking to us. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, the rain will fall on you truly. Dependency mentality. Everyone say it. One more time. Dependency mentality because although it is scriptural, can I have one gentleman? Come, my brother. 
if this guy is my son watch this if this guy is my son i have a scriptural injunction right as a father to take care of him is that true to take care of him to make sure that he eats well make sure he loves god and all the responsibilities but as the transition begins to occur in his life this child is now becoming an adult is that true that means that there must be a transition but by the time this gentleman is 30 years 25 years and he's still having a dependency mentality that's why we have so many men they are married but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do because they the transition happened but in their minds they didn't transit are you getting what i'm saying mommy what do i cook for him today he say what did you cook yesterday say say mom say oh yeah try gary today see that so that inability to stand to an extent brothers and sisters there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents house i'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything mommy prepares a room for him he now carries his wife later on the wife is pregnant she gives birth and they are all here it's a terrible thing it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying so dependency mentality they were giving you pocket money maybe five thousand ten thousand per month and now you graduate and five years after graduation you start frowning at your father he doesn't understand why the bad look has happened because he expected that you would have realized they gave you scholarship you were blowing it buying books buying uh, buying boots buying trainers buying everything after all my father he gave birth to me right and now you are finished and your father says um i think you should be considering moving say moving to where is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me the bible says this and that and that and that shame on many young people because although they are old we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit you see a lady ah i like this lady and where are you? what are your plans that transition dependency mentality hallelujah to an extent that you see a young man some of you are looking at me as i'm talking to you now you are in this category you are seated and you get up shamefully very shamefully and you call your old parents from their pension and you say popsy yeah can you transfer something to me and he says okay things are not going on i says it's always like that you're always and you cut the call and you are raking and your mediocre friends are massaging you say calm down please calm down calm down you know old people with this their thing and your mother is crying on phone at home and say my son it's not like i don't love you what is all that eh? it's not even this and that and that and that i beg jerry send me some money and then they go and borrow money and as old as you are they send money you use ten thousand to buy cake and celebrate 30 years and it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition is god speaking to us tonight oh you must grow in the name of jesus christ you may not like me now but i will come to your homes and you will thank me for it see let me tell you the person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth it may challenge you but it will make you a better person some of us we have this over dependence on everybody your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife not you to his wife not you hallelujah to an extent that there are many people who are i know people who are working but still want their parents to give them money they are working collecting salary hundred thousand they collect the salary and keep and say mommy how far dependency mentality you become a parasite to everybody there are people who everywhere you go when they see you you are tired you call people they say well, he's not around and he's the person you are looking for who is talking he picks the phone and says please john is not around he says, ah, are you not just yeah he's not around he calls the call because there is a parasite mentality right 
As a young man, you don't learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice beans swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people. And when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that, it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, Mommy. She looks at the husband and says, Daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to JS1. Five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates, you never cook, you don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do, just step into people's rooms. And when they see you coming, they say, lock the door. Lock the door. This parasite is coming. Your life is not supposed to be that way. Hey, hey, look, hold on, please. I hope as we are laughing, we are listening. Your life is not supposed to be like that. A parasitic life. Everybody runs away from you because you have a dependency mentality. You never have the opportunity to manage situations. You have headache. You are running around expecting everybody to say, you, you see that and, and the ugly part is when it happens for men. It makes, it's okay if it happens for women. But a matured man and another matured man, oh boy, sorry, oh, you have headache. What is that? Praise the Lord. The guy is not feeling fine. Who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic? It's not like there's no money. We are used to dependency mentality. Mommy, where are you? Come and take me to the hospital. You are 30 years. Dependency mentality. So that's what happens. When that kind of man gets married, his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities. Dependency. No food at home, eh? So what? No food. That's it now. They sack a man from work. Ten years later, he has not gotten another job. And he doesn't care. He said, what happened? To you? you know the way Nigeria Railway Corporation, that time we were working. Railway? I was working in Nitel. I was working in this. And he's qualified. The CVs are there. You hear me this night, bless you, please. Mindsets, dependency mentality. You must get out of it. Do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody. Say, I am a blessing, not a parasite. Say it, I am a blessing, not a parasite. When you were small, when you visit your uncle, once you are going, they, they carry smarties and conflicts and milk and bon vita. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, ah, So they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I will ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government is not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. 
So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy. That dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many WAEC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do Expo in Jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus, you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality on that mindset, we are still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So, they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. Oh guy, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria. There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize there is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out, why am I not eating? He says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family, now nah, I'm not, of course, you know we pray. Next week is miracle service, right? There's a place to deal with that. But let me tell you, it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons. Stop generalizing failure. There is, there is what you can know that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to generalize failure. My Bible says when men say there is a casting down, what will be your testimony? See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, 
when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable. Because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ah, all of you, your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance. Your own lack of understanding of submission, you just rubbed it in the whole picture and said, We are we are we are all we are all there's no marriage coming, it's like that. This is our family, self. That's why you find out that after prayers, after healing, after deliverance, some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there. The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life someone owes you making your success happen someone owes you making your life are you getting my point that that mentality the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being is an entitlement mentality we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors. Every time we are mentioning the things that make us fail, we never talk about ourselves. We never say our contribution to the equation. Hallelujah. Um, Elijah, why did you slap Shay? I slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence. And this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk. I'm watching you. I'm coming for you. You see? We never say, look, I got this wrong. I'm not in a good relationship right now. I've entered 10 relationships. Nothing has worked. Probably there's something. There is my outlook about life. There is my perspective. It's ego stinging to come to a point where you accept. But that is the point of true liberty. Are you getting what I'm saying? I begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it. My father refused. My father only gave me the car. Wouldn't I be married by now? An entitlement mentality. I begged my father for jam money. He refused to give me. Though I've not written the jam. Let me fail, but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands. Please hear me, Koinonia. I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must quit that that entitlement mentality from today. Some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones. Insulting them and saying, I'm disappointed. I asked you for 5,000. You cannot even send it. Mommy, this is to let you know. I respect you as my mother, but I'm, I'm disappointed. Send. You are cursing yourself. People return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning. Now, no cook. Ah, you didn't bring ingredients. You didn't bring the food. You didn't buy kerosene. You didn't wash the plates. But there is an entitlement mentality. Something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you. 
That's the entitlement mentality. Pastor Jake, I beg, I think get something from you. He said, no, what for? And you're hungry. Entitlement. That's why you see in many churches, there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony. Oh, God gave me three million and somebody's waiting for them immediately after the service. Say, well done, sir. Ah! Your testimony really touched me. You see, I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life. And it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? Eh, nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um, I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? Food stuff has finished. And you say, um, so how can I help you now? You say, I need like 30, 30 will do me. Look at, he's, he's seeking help from somebody and he's coming with a childish, right? Entitlement mentality. There are some of us who, and that's the danger. The danger there is when somebody starts helping you, it almost becomes like a right. Have you seen people that came to our homes or our families? They were trained parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started. Have you seen people like that? Terrible thing. You see a man and his wife, maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month. Right? Very soon they start complaining. I've been watching the way madam is putting food for her husband. Ah. What did you expect? I noticed the way she puts food for my own husband. You are squatting in somebody's house. Entitlement mentality. My uncle gave me a job in this company. How can I be in this company? My uncle is there and I'm not one of the directors. My uncle, Uncle Solomon, that grew up in our boys' quarters. I cooked for him. So what? So what? You come late, they put a circular in, in, your, in your reception decks. Resume work by 6.30, you come by 10. You've done that for three years, they didn't, they didn't promote you. Your uncle has done everything to lift you. And you are not cooperating, yet entitlement mentality. How many people have we hated innocently in life? How many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality? To an extent, some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother. I refuse that mentality. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's God speaking to us. Some of these things I'm saying, when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow, just let it enter you because it will, it will refine you. And it will make you as gold. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, miracle service. And they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out. And I saw a lot of people smiling. And I said, transition. Transition. 
Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. Praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me, I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone. But it's, I wanted to show all of you, I wanted us to project it here, our old six massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo i really would love us to have that i think we can work i have it in my email eh? get me a laptop with internet and i'll transfer it to you yes i want you to see it one day we'll come up we have the video i think we have the video of our 2007 crusade you will see all of us there you see victor the head of department of protocol they all held firewood on their head Hey, oh. that's what the song they were singing and jumping hey, oh. and you see us so lean looking like like whatever transitions but here we are today 10 years after now we will look back you will see the pictures of today and you will smile you will tell your daughter that was me say are you hearing that was me I was serving the Lord all my life so don't think is this lie that most of our parents lied to us they said they were su president they were the best footballer in their school they were best everything our own has proof you can see it and you can know praise the lord one last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality we're still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres. And I'm, I've just touched on number one, medio mentalities, mindsets, really. Mediocre mentality. What is a mediocre mentality? It's the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal. It's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet. The mindset of an average life. The belief, the fallacy. That an average life is the greatest way to make heaven. It's a mediocre mentality. That mindset of being small. Have you had people like that? Me, all I want, God, just give me one small golf, one, two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We are happy. We are a simple, nice family church. We are happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We are there. We are not doing anything. We are not letting anybody know what God. We are happy. We are okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising There's an army rising up, and they will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Kingdom advancement, kingdom advancement is tied to one word, influence one word influence without influence there is no kingdom advancement i want you to know that when the church is quiet in a society there is no influence and there is no advancement the church in nigeria is not quiet at all that's why we are involved in everything in this country the church nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world and forget about the errors here and there i tell you the church in nigeria is alive we have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free. Influence. I've studied revivals. I've studied um, technological revivals. It was all tied to the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
We need men and women of influence. Get my teaching, Conquering Cosmos. There I teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion. It's not just sharing tracts. Influence. What is wrong if Koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members? You imagine that. We call that influence. Where one person represents a nation. Influence. Influence. Are you getting what I'm saying? Please don't ever reject influence in your life because God wants to give it to you. It was through influence Jesus was able to advance the kingdom. The Bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver. It says in, in Matthew chapter 5, it says you are the salt of the earth. You add value. You give meaning to the earth. You are not just a tongue talker. He calls you the salt of the earth. He calls you the light of the world. And he says you are a city. Not like a city. Not a village. You are a city. Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small souls are saved because of the influence destinies are changed because of the influence during the retreat media people told us the targets that they want on facebook and the rest and i told them go for it we are going all the way for it let me tell you this is not a small ministry we are visionary people and we refuse to be small and you will never be part of this vision and be small i will challenge you i will challenge you Thank God for where you are, but we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage in Nigeria if one person owned a television station. Is that true? Television station. I remember that time you own a television station, they tell you every kind of thing. And God said, come on. Where are those apostles? And men and women started rising. 2005, the Lord revealed to me that there will be 37 Christian stations in Nigeria. And today, how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media? Are you getting what I'm saying? All the technological gurus and the rest. Imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention Jesus. But imagine that you put it on and, and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song. Whether you like it or not, you must buy it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You must make your presence known. It's the, it's the, it's, it's the principle of dominion. Part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory. Then they will adopt your ideologies. Then they will embrace your convictions. If there are, if there are hundred millionaires, I'm not talking of one million, real millionaires in this place, I guarantee you, your spheres of influence will. I, something happened, I think, um, I went, one of our ladies here, she's, she's technically my account officer with one of the banks. And, um, and, uh, were going she had been forcing me to come and collect my card my card had expired and she was forcing me to come and collect the card she said i should get back into banking with them and all of that and then eventually i went she had prepared everything when i got there she was greeting me her superior was just looking at me who is this guy and before i know it i saw one koinonia member coming again and then one other lady coming to greet i said that's right this is the kind of testimony we want to be seen when they came and they were greeted, ah, the man squared up and said, oh, well done, sir. I told him, I said, this, this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank. Look at her. See that? What does that mean? Promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job. The influence of the kingdom. I don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God. I want you to know that the more you have results, the more your words become powerful. Results add weight to your words. Results Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. 
Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jakes in his place of work, within a short time, when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, those guys, those guys, come on now. Physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined, you can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead, but last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, three days after his death, they made 120 million dollars at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up. This is why we are teaching these teachings. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Sing one more time. There's an army. There's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way. I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. Break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8, when you read down, it says, Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Much fruit, not little fruit. Much fruit. much fruit look i'm not talking of some carnal fleshly wanting to make it in life i'm talking of lifting with an assignment influence that is intentional as a means to an end it makes your words powerful you are able to speak hallelujah that's why we must speak into your life oh you will get the oil company job that devil will not stop you the, the, no there are the principles you will get it you will be wealthy you will be blessed the devil will be alive to see it i will never raise a poor congregation never raise a weak congregation a weak congregation produces a weak man of god a weak ministry that has no voice i will never let anybody watch me on tv and scroll and say next this useless man part of the noisemakers no that when you listen you say this is it i had one word and it changed me you must embrace the influence of the kingdom i don't know what you have been taught but you must change your mind we have small parents innocent but small small families small everything small i got my small degree i read my thing i don't even want anything let me just get i got one teaching in one lea school i'm okay Seven thousand is enough. What am I looking for in this life? Stop that. Stop that kind of devilish thinking. Remember, let me always balance this. I'm not talking of this carnal, lustful affinity for the things of the world. I'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention. Right? The exact intention. 
to bring the glory and the kingdom of God. There was a time Jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and Pharisees. The guys were angry. They said they are not listening to us again. Ah, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures my spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason. I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly. So laziness, everybody say laziness. The second reason why people become failures in life is laziness. There is this spirit of laziness that is upon many Nigerians, upon many young people, an inertia, a reluctance to move forward, inactivity, satisfied with their levels. Closely tied to laziness, is the spirit of procrastination. I will do it another day. Oh, I will do it. Is it not savings? I will save the money. Is it I will do it? I will do it. Procrastination is a dangerous spirit. Pray for your destiny. I will pray. Settle down. Begin to study in the unique area God has called you. Man of God, study about church growth. I will study one day until all your members leave. And then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their heart? Go and touch it too, if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging, no matter who you are. And I have found something with lazy people hate begging. They hate begging. They feel embarrassed. Don't worry, just bring it, bring it, bring it. I'll do it fast. Lazy people hate begging. Hallelujah. Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that alright? Alright, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down.
ahead and preach. Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job. Action, laziness. I would do it. No. Unfortunately, time does not wait for everybody. And if you want to wait until everything is right, you will never move in your life. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap. Hallelujah. Laziness. Inaction. Procrastination. That inertia. Refusal to move forward. You are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, eh, no problem. You sit with that money immediately. You sit before you know it. You have spent 200 naira from it. See that? Before you know it, you finish the money. You just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep 8 hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. You sleep from 8 o'clock. You wake up Round one waking is around four. You just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around. When there is none, you lie down. You wake up around nine. That's the second phase of, of the waking up. It's not like you sleep marathon. You wake up, just browse around, and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep. Before you know it, it's one o'clock. You just yawn and stand up. And you sit down, you are lazy. as a sleep. You will be poor, guaranteed. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about, I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? you lie down and sleep it brings a lot of things forgetfulness you are 30 years you forget about everything somebody says I'm coming he comes now and says why are you here he says, I said I'm coming he says, oh I remember he says, but you are too young for that unnecessary sleep when the night time when you should wake up and study and pray 
some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down your bed and wake up you didn't know that anybody lay down there because you sleep and and the sleep is so deep you wake up and you are frowning ah why did you wake me it's a bad attitude I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentleman. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life. One. Two. Anointing disappearing from your life. Wake up. Don't you know there is the mystery of the night time? Look at the prophets in the Bible. Look at men. Look, Job said, um, I mean, the psalmist said in the night time, during his time of meditation, when things are revealed to him, the night time is when great men get insights. It's the time where men of power travel in the spirit. Okay, it's, it's, it's true that you are tired. At least three, four or so. Wake up. Don't let your body cheat you. You need to drag it and say, no way. I refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life. Who is God speaking to? There are certain people, even five o'clock waking up in the morning, that families used to do, you know that thing they do, five o'clock. You wake up, you carry your Bible, drop on your bed and sleep on it. Somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on that deep med. Who are you cheating? Who are you lying to? When you see somebody, Please, please, don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny. I'm not telling you not to sleep. There are times I take out time to rest. But brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. God told you to get up and read on leadership. I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life. Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? You go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira. And you go and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira. Is it your own? No. Because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served do they take people who have not served did you go did you go you see ba look at me many of us write a lot of prayer requests next week now there will be another one i, I you know i kneel down to pray and i see it some of you is full scab you write it and then you write uh, please turn over that means it does not finish you there's still some more but the issue is that do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it you will need to take action you see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? 
fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Don't say I'm a child. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. One of the top three wealthiest people in the world. He was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old. Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children. They say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you, if you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, what are you, what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it, you now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all would not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. Ah! No, please, oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me. That a man is going to come, ask your hand in marriage, and you'll be gloriously said, say, me, marry a man. Me, men. Look at my children, me. Men. The woman was saying, I said, madam, I'm a man. Oh, please, this one that you are talking about, men, I said, it's not every man that, everybody, blah, 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 blah. The woman started crying. I said, madam, God is bringing a good, oh, okay, oh, you know how women talk. Okay, oh, let's see fear fear that's what has stopped some of us from being champion you are used to failing the day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded it says a lie don't play games with me don't you know that the divine life part of the blessings of the divine life is a life of success no matter how you have failed in life hear me i want you to believe that you can come back alive are you hearing me say i refuse to fear Say it, I refuse to win. See, there is a, there is an, let me, let me use this slang. There is an, I don't send mentality. You have to give life and give people if you want to make it. Some of us are too careful. What will, what will Zuera say now? What will mom, we are too careful. That, that, that excessive care is not, is not care unto faith. It's care unto doubt and it will kill you. There are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear. What if I capsize in a gutter? You have refused to learn. There are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things. God gave you opportunity to learn so many things. There's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. I said, Guy, me, please, I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, I, I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses. And tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. 
get up and in the name of Jesus take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinonia, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. So let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Ignorance of kingdom principles. Ignorance. This is, in my opinion, the biggest reason. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written you cannot observe what you do not know he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life, everybody knows that there is honor upon your life. Hallelujah. Longevity has a principle. Longevity. Influence has a principle. And he said in Matthew chapter 13 now, I think verse 11 or so, if I'm not mistaken, he said, it has been given unto you. Say it has been given unto me. One more time, it has been given unto me. To know the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom. It is on the strength of those mysteries. That you will enjoy dominion. It is on the strength of those mysteries. That you will do great and mighty things in life. Nobody will just come and bless you for nothing. When during our series the mysteries of the kingdom. I teach on the law of exchange. And I told you nothing goes for nothing nothing goes for nothing there is an exchange that must happen listen let me tell you this there is nothing you can do with a man or a people that become a force when you have results real results replicable results it is impossible for a territory to deny your presence here's what jesus said teaching in what we call the beatitudes the principles of the kingdom he says you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth he says you are a city not like a city a city that is set on a hill how can a city be on a hill men whom the earth was not worthy of a city set on a hill giving light men will light that candle and put it on top of a bush for a very long time pastors have made the church weak because they don't know what else to do when they are not saved they are the weakest in every society they are the poorest they are the whatever it is under the spirit of servitude within a territory i reject that for koinonia in the name of jesus christ that you are able to disciple and mentor nations 
God is giving us influence and granting us grace and when that influence comes people will be able to listen to you you will say the same thing now that you said five years ago and people will cry hearing you not because more anointing was added to it more result is now backing what you are saying the same thing you said before are we together now yes everything they say about you is correct until your results prove otherwise everything they say your god is weak they are right until your results prove otherwise hearing is my father glorified 15 and verse 8 john hearing brothers and sisters let us not be hypocrites for god's sake this is how god is glorified when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit my mother and my father when your children become the best and the most influential people within a city and are madly in love with god they will influence more people within a year than you will do holding a crusade in 10 years everybody is seeking for someone to reference his life after that's why we chase after musicians that's why we go online searching for people when people show certain things that we want even if we know they are lying we still follow them if someone decides to wear rags today if you see the money he has close to the rags tomorrow you too since you don't have the money you can start with the rags at least you can tear your cloth to look like it to give you hope that you will become like him we are making nonsense marketable because there is no result to back it I vow to myself and I vow before my God that I will never be a weak representative of the kingdom by every standard as far as the territories are located for my my spiritual impact is concerned we will have to do something for God that will make God beat his chest and say truly I have sons upon the earth that's why we are here that's why we are here and many times you will think that these things are just boastful statements no when a man speaks you need to look at the force back in him if it is your ability whether intellectual physical whatever then you are wasting your time but the power of the highest mary said how shall these things be seen that i know not a man and the angel said the power of the highest will overshadow you are we together now the mandate of jesus it's not more members the mandate of jesus is not a greater name for a ministry the mandate of jesus is not more people in a register the mandate of jesus is not more slaves loyal to a man called a man of god the mandate of jesus is that there will be people who understand the kingdom and love him and understand his system to be able to mentor and disciple nations your nation must look up to you otherwise you have failed if it's business if it's ministry if it's family whatever it is go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples not go and have denominations go and make disciples That you should not give room for any unbeliever within your territory to hold a level of influence that will have to make you bend to God to receive their resources. No, sir. This is a message that the devil has fought for many years. And so many believers, especially we around the northern middle belt and part of the, we, we, we are not kingdom and we are not strategic in our understanding. We are morally sound, bless God. We love the Lord with all our heart, bless God. But we find out that our lives are empty, void of spiritual meaning because we do not know what else to do. So we seek God, we love him, we become anointed, we even fall under the anointing. But to what end was that anointing given? We don't know. And so we roam around and hope that the mundane things that we spend our lives on will give us meaning. Nothing else has the ability to give your life meaning than knowing that you are living your life according to purpose and that it is giving joy to the Father. 
in a few minutes from now we are going to be celebrating dimensions of the hand of god the miracles of god you know why we are doing this because we know that first we love the people but second it is a testament that's why it matters when unbelievers hear what god is doing when believers hear what god is doing thank god for it but the real impact is that what god is doing gets to the ears of the unbelievers because it will compel them are we together now you are gathered here tonight first because you love god he brought you but quite honestly because you are trusting god for various levels of supernatural solutions people have been here since monday tuesday wednesday families groups ministries people have traveled endured all kinds of things because someone told you or you heard it in a message that if you came here your life and your situation will change did you think they lied sit back and watch what god does with your life in a few minutes from now. So, that when you leave this place and go back as a man of god you will be surprised yourself the next time you see you will not come alone you will be too grateful to come alone when a mother comes here and sees what god does to her she will remember immediately that my stubborn neighbor's son that means they always wanted him change it's just that they had been looking for a place anointed enough to make them let me tell you i still say it again and again i thank god for posters i thank god for handbills please i'm in no way trying to demean them but nothing will cover the publicity that real power and real result creates people are too grateful rumors spread in overnight nobody paid for it and yet it goes round that's the same way the word of the lord can come upon you ah, i came for koinonia a program called the miracle service i just strolled there and my life changed overnight madam the next one is next month i don't have money you, you better look for money and you see people run around and come and receive and so our own assignment is to continue to stay with god to make sure that everybody that comes you take a level of fire that like queen of sheba you say half of this was not told me if we are not doing this this is just jamboree and a ceremony and a sin and wickedness because when people pay so much price and leave wherever they come from to come and sit down and then we entertain and make all kinds of noise and jargons and they go back again with the same pain we've wasted their time and we cause the heart of the father to bleed we make miracle walk promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make a miracle walk a promise keep you won't believe i've not even touched what i wanted to share as the message for tonight this year your life will change in the name of jesus christ this year your life will change by the power of the holy spirit it's true let those who laugh at you laugh Ephesians chapter 3 please let me have your attention I want to share with you a powerful revelation that God put in my heart for this meeting and then we will pray mighty God we bless you Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the Bible says now unto him please look up the Lord has been pounding this scripture in my heart and I need to teach you and show you and make sure that you get it as a revelation now unto him that is able to do everybody say able to do 
exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think everybody say ask or think one more time say ask or think that means there are two ways listen carefully your petitions and requests get to god number one is through your prayer by verbalizing it number two is through your thinking your paradigm also is a prayer request it sends prayers to heaven the bible says god will do what you ask or think not ask and think that means when you are not praying and you are thinking you are still praying before god your mouth and your mind are also prayer warriors the only thing is that for many of us our mouths are better prayer warriors than our minds most times our minds pray nonsense and that's why you find out that the things that you desire you may not see the results that are consistent with your desires because there are two prayer warriors in your life one is your mouth let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart both be acceptable that means the words of my mouth can be acceptable but the meditations of my heart can cancel everything he is able to do listen carefully exceeding abundantly far above all i ask far above all i think it matters it matters that the word of god does not just penetrate our spirits alone the word of god must have an effect listen carefully you will never be a world changer you will never be usable in the hand of god until the word of god is able to influence your understanding influence you we're talking about fruitfulness you will never be fruitful this year just because a prophetic word came as powerful as it is you can limit god your mouth may be praying because you are told to pray but your mind continues to make your destiny unfruitful listen very carefully most of the miracles that we need i submit to you most of the miracles that we need are in the realm of our understanding and the realm of the mind much more than physical miracles we need a real miracle of a reconstructed understanding to be able to know god's perspectives this is the secret of victory this is how we win in this kingdom that's why the preaching and the teaching of the word is very important because they are the spiritual systems are located for bringing understanding when the word is preached and taught generally it brings you into a comprehension it influences your understanding and when your mind listen when your mind changes then truly your life will change it's true you are not truly free until your mind is free no matter what else around you is free if your mind is under captivity then you are really in bondage are we together let me show you something a revelation that god gave me for tonight luke chapter 4 we are reading five verses luke chapter 4 we'll start from verse 14 luke chapter 4 this is jesus now luke chapter 4 and verse 14 after his time of fast and prayer the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through the region round about 15. and he taught in their synagogues you see jesus was a teacher he was a teacher he wanted to give people understanding 90 percent of his ministry was teaching 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 he built the disciples by teaching the impartations happen few times most of their encounters was the teaching ministry of jesus that's how they became apostles the bible says being glorified of all 16. let me have your attention now and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read he's about to read isaiah 61 now listen and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor 
he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised just keep 18. see how many times the various issues required preaching there were three main issues in the ministry of jesus that the solution was hidden in preaching not doing preaching number one very quickly that every time you met a poor man the solution lied in doing something to his mind the bible says he had anointed me to preach not just to give to the poor he had anointed me to do something to their minds because the issue whether it is some version say meek it doesn't matter no matter how you see it it still requires preaching so when you see someone in a financial predicament god's recommendation is that that person is not yet free until the word of god is able to do something to his mind otherwise that person will remain in bondage how true bless someone who is poor in his mind a thousand times his mind would turn his life back to look like his mind when it has to do with the poor the secret to really helping them is to camp them under the wisdom of god's word and the bible says to preach the gospel to the poor the next sets of people that require preaching amazing amazing this is where the apostolic and prophetic ministry in many regards has failed woefully the next set of those who require preaching are those who are captive in need of deliverance it didn't say to conduct deliverance it said to preach deliverance that means much more than driving the spirit entity in their lives and around their situations jesus is saying they are not truly free until deliverance is preached to them listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call this deliverance through transformation that your mind is reoriented again to have spiritual understanding that keeps the door closed one of the things and and i thank god that this is a ministry that believes in the whole counsel of god shortly we are going to be praying casting out devils and just taking away these influences that stand the way of people but then the bible says that the journey to deliverance will continue being a cycle a helpless cycle to the point that it becomes a mockery until the preaching dimension not the laying hands dimension not the prophecy dimension the preaching dimension there is something that must be captured in your deliverance message that affects the minds not just the spirits and the bodies of men otherwise these spirits will make a mockery of you they will leave the people and return back because their mindsets have become strongholds the spirits have created fortifications around their thinking that will allow the spirit come back again are we together to preach deliverance not just to conduct deliverance i admit to you that it is here that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in many regards has failed because of the charismatism that is around ministering to people seeing someone fall roll under the anointing you know when that happens it looks like it's an accolade on you as the man of god and so we enjoy it no matter how many times you must go through that rigor i'm satisfied provided it helps in making me shine but the bible is saying by and large the delivery will be tired <laughs> permit me my english that person is not going to except if it's a fresh impartation and the person must know the new grace that is different from last week's falling there's a lot of mess in the body of christ demons continue to make mockery of our ignorance many people are permanent gateways for the entry and the exit of spirits it was jesus himself that carried out the demonology lecture he didn't give anybody he handled that course by himself and this is what he taught us remember when jesus talks you listen he says when a spirit leaves a man that means spirits can leave men we know that apostles and prophets we god has helped us in that area we know how to make spirits leave men 
but the bible says that spirit will go through dry regions seeking for a place of refuge are we together now and then the bible says not finding a place of refuge here's what the spirit will say remember the person had been delivered now and he's jumping in the church and he's happy hallelujah doors are opening and the spirit is saying i'm coming back the spirit is saying i will go back like the prodigal son the prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. The spirit says, I will arise and go back to my house. He's calling the person who had been delivered my house. That means he's still, he's still laying claims. He comes back according to Jesus and finds the house swept, clean, but empty. Everybody say empty. Say it, empty. There is a law in the spirit that anywhere there is void, anything can fill it. When there was darkness and void, the Holy Spirit came to hover around it. Swept clean through deliverance by casting out the devil, but then empty. Because the word contents that will fill that person and close the door permanently is not there. He has not received the preaching dimension of deliverance. To let you know that now that this spirit has left you, are we together now to begin to educate you into understanding what christ has done for you and then to help you to be able to stand your ground like paul would teach in the book of ephesians supplying you all the spiritual arsenals that can keep you safe now that you are free it's not there so the spirit will route to anything anger jealousy and gladly stroll back into the person unfortunately jesus said no spirit returns alone it will gather seven others more dangerous than itself and return to the person so that the end of that person is worse than the beginning if you're with me say amen this is why there are many temporal miracles you hear people say i received a miracle a spirit left me and then i started this and then the situation gets compounded and it becomes worse again because the person does not or he has not been educated to see the relevance you see let me tell you this come the moment you cast a spirit out of a person or out or around a situation spirits are not only in people spirits are also in situations situations are bodies that spirits can possess are we together now yes so that situation or that body the spirit leaves but the individual listen carefully the individual is here standing and his mindset has not been changed has not been altered the mindset becomes a gateway that spirit enters back and continues to influence the person and when these spirits study the man of god and they know that the man of god may be well-meaning he may be very anointed but his word content is very low they no longer will be afraid even before you cast them they'll just go out and you will think it's a sign that you are getting more anointed it's a sign that they have mastered your ignorance and created a way of insulting you they will freely go and wait immediately after the grace they enter the person and continue to go so you see the labor it looks like this warfare is endless you will continue to cast out demons and demons and demons and demons forever whereas there can be victory established are you with me now That's why you can have a particular dream or series of dreams or all kinds of attacks and then you can have a strong season where there is an emphasis on the ministry or deliverance ministry or something like that and then the demons leave and afterwards the patience and the interest to allow deliverance be taught you is not there and these spirits will return they are stubborn spirits so said jesus they don't leave and go away even satan left jesus for a while and came back came back through peter came back through judas until he thought he caught jesus are we together the body of christ does not have the patience to allow the word of god let me tell you this if you are not teaching people you have to teach people the value of sitting to receive and to grow in the word the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you in all richness you are a man of god here please listen it is not so much about manifestation and rolling under the anointing and all of those kinds of things 
train your people to sit down and listen to the word of God and then train yourself to make sure you understand what you are teaching so that the people are not listening to what becomes poisonous to them if you're with me say amen when believers were saved in the early church they were not just left to go a few people were left without real spiritual follow-up and you saw what happened to them for instance in acts chapter 19 the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast he came and he found certain disciples supposedly and then he asked them a question he said have you received the holy ghost since he believed and they said we've not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and then he said unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said unto the baptism of john and jesus corrected them and said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance so that you will believe on who that will come and then they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus and paul laying his hands upon them the bible says they were filled with the holy spirit and began to pray in tongues and they prophesied they were 12 in number all of them that was a new level for them when you just back down a little you read from chapter 18 the last six verses the bible talks about a man called apollos a great man he was an eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture the bible says but he knew only the baptism of john and then one day he came for a meeting and then aquila and priscilla met him and then they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly and then he become more useful to the body because he now began to argue based on the new light that he had you must pray and cast away ignorance the worst oppression is not demonic oppression that the spirit influences you is that when the spirit saps your desire for the word so that you do not have time and especially for women of god it's possible to be reading the bible just because of the pressure i've been ministering right from saturday back to back every day up until yesterday dash in here to come tomorrow i'm back again to finish the conference you can imagine over 18 sermons within one week so it's easy i can be up and doing just studying the bible as though i have an interest but it may be that it's just for the formality of finding a sermon and these spirits watch out for these kinds of things are we together you prevail as a believer when your understanding is altered by the word of god it gives you an appreciation for excellence it gives you an appreciation for diligence it gives you an appreciation for knowledge it gives you an appreciation for value you see the all surpassing excellency of god's power it will make you need the holy spirit in your life it will damage ignorance from your life and strengthen you to be effective and remember the more your spiritual capacity is the more god can flow through you and from you to others this is how to disciple nations are we together this night so give us luke chapter 4 again let me finish up and then we'll pray mighty god so the poor need the gospel preached those in need of deliverance much more than the casting of the devil they need to understand the message that the bible calls preaching deliverance and then number three look up please to preach again the acceptable year of the lord king james says the acceptable year of the lord i think it's a new living translation that says to preach the year of the lord's favor the word acceptable year there doesn't just mean the day god has agreed uh -uh. it was a direct translation but it is the lord's favor to preach the lord's favor so those in need of favor is more than just laying on of hands it's more than just prophecy receive favor there is an a spiritual education a spiritual curriculum you must pass through to really walk in favor is one of the biggest mistakes again we make in church because we teach people that favor is unmerited that favor just happens when god wants to favor you but it's not true it's not true my brothers let me tell you this it is not true favor is merited there is a dimension of favor that operates as though unmerited 
but when you truly know what favor is and how it works you know that it is merited merited there does not mean everything even your obedience is done by the grace of god supplied you don't have the power to walk in it favor is not unmerited don't insult any man of god and don't look down any man of god you hear teaching and saying is unmerited that's not what i'm teaching you you may buy into his understanding and find out that we are saying the same thing but then i can tell you this if you are under this leadership and you want results in your life understand that favor is merited i've taught you this that favor is a child that a pregnant woman gives birth to right proverbs 13 and verse 15 good understanding give it or bring it forth favor and it says the way of the transgressor is hard good understanding is like a woman proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 good understanding is like a pregnant woman she can give birth to a child and the bible names that child favor transgression is also like another pregnant woman that can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship hardship is predictable there is there is an exact gestation period and you give birth to something that you name unfortunately it's life that names it hardship that's the name of your child favor that's the name of your child So when you tell people favor is unmerited they just sit down and say okay so what do i do and then they just sit down and say okay god just favor me and nothing will happen most people have not tasted what the bible calls favor i've said it again and again that most of what we call favor is breakthrough favor is only favor if it is repeated if it happens just once in a while or once in a long while that's breakthrough that's not favor is true are we together so when you need favor jesus is teaching us in the temple that you must be taught that there is something called the acceptable year of the lord ah. i know there's more that's found in you be careful be careful what becomes the foundation of your spiritual knowledge and don't be ashamed to open yourself for change many times we are loyal to our current level that even in the face of truth we would rather be loyal to where we are than sustain the flexibility to move to where we need to be i have absolute disloyalty for error i'm not ashamed when i find out that there is a need for adjustment and correction just because you held on to a, a truth or a light all your life the moment you find the truth you see your loyalty you feel like you are betraying your convictions and we will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you and i will never yell will never settle for less One more time. We will never say, we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. The same way many of us may have innocently learned that automatically demons just leave themselves out of you. It may be an honest knowledge you have sustained for a long time. You see that? by very well-meaning men and women of god from a very sincere heart that's why knowing god is powerful you need flexibility to know god because you will know things about him that will, it will be like deliverance from a cult now how do i come out of this knowing that all my life this is what i've believed in i shared with you a story years ago about a gentleman fine smart man of god who for a long time held the view that look it was impossible demons cannot influence people etc etc and he held on to that and he was a very sincere person lovely fine nice gentleman and i remember when he came to see me in my room then 
as soon as I saw him, I saw a spirit standing behind him that came with him. And then I was, I was trying to look for the most loving way to just tell him, my brother, you may need prayer. No, 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 no. I don't need anything. I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm this. I said, I understand. I'm not about to argue with you, but please, this is what I'm... No, 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 no. This person came for counseling. Something is obviously wrong with his life. And now I'm seeing that this is what is wrong. And the gentleman will just not agree. And then I pleaded with him to give me a chance to pray for him. And this guy would get up like 15 minutes later, shouting and manifesting and talking on all kinds of things and then when I was done he got up I didn't look down on him I politely appreciated him for more than three days this gentleman could not be himself he went back according to him and carried his Bible he kept sending me text messages apostle so what is the meaning of this now I believe this I believe that do you cry when you buy a better phone do you feel bad when you be buy a better phone? Don't be ashamed when you are open to truth that is new, but truth it is. Just because it's not something that has been captured in your experience. That's why you must have meekness and flexibility. The goal is not to create argument and to, no, 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 no. If I find out that what I believe now is wrong, I will be glad to repent and find out what the truth is and in all honesty come and tell you i apologize i've seen better now i will not be ashamed to say it but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you god has granted us the grace to prove some things and these things we teach are not suggestions are we together yes. favor will not come upon you just because you want it the gospel must be preached you must sit down and you must be taught the systems that activate favor and then when the teaching comes there is an empowerment is usually light and grace light grace light grace full of grace and truth 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 that's how it works when the truth comes upon you then the level of grace to demonstrate that dimension you have had is given to you is someone learning tonight i'm saying this because most of us are in these three categories tonight trusting god you came for a miracle service because you are tired of all the things that have happened around your life and are happening some of us have come because we are trusting lord can you look down on me with favor and i'm showing you jesus himself teaching at the temple that's why they marveled at him 20 let's look at verse 20 20 of luke chapter 4 we're praying shortly luke i'm um, 20 now i'm 20 let's look at verse 20 and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister so there was a man of god there before him and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him 21 let me add 21 and he began to say unto them these days this scripture fulfilled in your ears when you read down the bible says they marveled at him saying what what doctrine is this is this not joseph's son where did he learn this one from now you must know something new to rise to a new level what you know has brought you where you are and if you stay there you will continue to recycle your results you must contend for light and glory and truth that's why i sang that song and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in i told you for many years demons used to oppress me remember my story as a man of god I went to many people sincerely let me tell you this by god's grace i tell you this i'm a student of knowledge there are few people that study and read like me i say it with all humility and so i read lots of books that propose so many things and i walked in those things yet these spirits would not leave me as a man of god they would oppress me i would go to bed and they would oppress me sometimes even in the midst of fasting like it's happening to many of you I will round up the fast as I'm rounding up the fast the same experience will happen again I said what I mean what is this is it, will it be honest that I don't have faith 
eventually i found out what was wrong and god helped me in that area that's why i continue to trust god to help people in these areas may god may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. not just to say what you know this is a prayer you will appreciate in the nearest future may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. because the end of all argument truly is results consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained are we together and tonight the lord wants to visit us like benga shared is a buffet a buffet of fat things he has set the table before us for yours it may not be that there's an infirmity you are trusting god for but there is a level of favor listen god has declared by his spirit that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness genesis 17 and verse 6 and i will make you exceeding fruitful he says and nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins one of the keys i taught you that sponsor extraordinary fruitfulness is the favor of god this one everybody must cry it and you must receive it if every miracle service is dedicated to releasing favor it will be worth it because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters happy is a man whose jealousy the, the when the jealousy of god zooms on you you become a fearful wonder even to yourself it's true it's true you stand back and watch in shock and wonder and say god what are you doing it's not unmerited it is empowered but not unmerited there is an active contribution through knowledge and faith that brings it and tonight i believe that in the name of jesus christ within the few minutes we have a very quick work to do tonight there are many of us seated here the truth is that there are spirits around your life and behind the situations of your life and it does not matter trust god that they will leave you there are others your miracle service began while i was teaching because now you are gaining understanding so this is why these things continue to be repeated in my life but there are others the mountain that stands before you is a mountain of complete disfavor if in three days no one helps you something is wrong the favor of god is not on you 72 hours is too much for heaven to not respond to you forgive me if this sounds arrogant you will know it's true i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you i will come to you i will come to you you get up in the morning lord thank you and there's all kinds of favor daily loading you with benefits and i'm not just talking finance finance is not the only expression of favor it's a needed one but not the only expression of favor when god lifts men to make your life easy you are trusting god for a new dimension in the spirit someone goes out of his way and gets a book by an author you do not know and comes to give you and that book is teaching on the anointing in a way you have never seen that's favor it doesn't always have to be money when we say favor people think money you are trusting god for a realm of the prophetic and then god grants you access to a man of god you never would have had access to and one impartation brings you into that realm it is favor the absence of hardship is the proof of favor let me sing this song again before we pray don't join me listen and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you favor found in him new levels of grace found in him 
that you step into a meeting as a man of God and you know that principalities and powers yokes thrones dominions are about to be subdued it's not a suggestion you are not guessing you are standing from a pinnacle of light and no power in existence will sustain the ability to negate God's word upon your life a dear man of God I met you know while I was ministering great wonderful man just yesterday I met with him and he said apostle after a meeting and he said sir I've been trying to get a name for my company for weeks and for months I'm a man of God and I've been praying and I laughed because when something is within your power you see that within your power given to you by grace the same way a little child comes to say please give me pure water and you can bring out five naira because it's within your power there are some things after tonight it will be within your power it's true. within your power to speak and change things within your power and i told him i said let's pray i said this night you will have the answer and by evening he calls me and says apostle i almost cannot believe this even as a man of god that i was sitting down and this is the name this is that and i told him congratulations and he said what is this and i told him that this is called the power of god the power of god is a force it produces changes the same way you are sitting quietly now your life is at the mercy of an anointing and within few minutes my brothers and my sisters I, I i never i never cease to marvel at what the anointing can do just like that just like in a twinkling of an eye and someone's burden has lifted for decades like that in in a moment and you're waiting for days in zaria will be worth it completely just like that Please believe this if a worker in this ministry believe it don't get used to these things and allow people who come from somewhere to continue to receive and you sit down and say wow I know no let's not cheat ourselves let's be sincere God is able to do let me tell you it is within his power to surprise you tonight not just to give you miracles to surprise you it is within his power to begin to alter systems and structures this night not tomorrow this night this night the bible says every man should minister according to the measure of the grace of god given to you when you measure outside of the jurisdiction of the grace supplied it's called pride elijah said let him come naman elisha so that he will know not that there is a god in israel that there is a prophet in israel you would call that pride but the result showed it the same way you are a man of god now and in a few minutes if you are a man of god and you came here i want you to just get ready because what will come on your life it will lift you to a pedestal in the spirit that will surprise you you will walk in strange levels of glory this is by the spirit are you hearing what i'm saying now we're about to pray Blessed be the name of the Lord. Results are not acts of pride and arrogance. They are acts of the grace and the mercy of God. Activated through knowledge. So God takes you to a new dimension. We are going to do a very, we will trust God for a very quick walk. I took out time to teach tonight because this is the real miracle. The performance all of that it is just a touch and all of that and one prophetic word but what you are hearing now is it this alteration that is happening not just to your spirit but to your mind find out how many impartation services jesus conducted you will be surprised there were few times one of which he breathed upon them received the holy ghost but most times he camped with them for 40 days all he was doing was to teach but do you not know that in the light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power the power of god flows through his word so when the word of god is coming now you are immersed in his glory you see that and the spirit entered me not just when he laid hands on me when he spake unto me 
I've taught you how the word of God works. That the word of God is like a tray. It's carrying something. You don't receive it just for the word's sake. You receive it for what is on it. If, if I'm hungry and you serve me jollof rice, you bring it on a tray. Is that true? The first thing I receive is the tray. I receive the tray with joy, not because I need the tray. I need the rice. The word of God is a conveyor of the possibilities of God. So when the word of God comes to you, you are happy because of what is in it and on it. He sent forth his word. He sent forth his word. His word of deliverance. His word of, of healing. His word of lifting. Have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation can be born? He says, but as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. That means it's possible tonight that before the meeting is over, your phone can beep and you will see something that will keep you on your knees. And say, Lord, you just answered my prayer of five years in one day. How shall these things be? That's the voice of unbelief. We're talking God here. We're not talking a man. God. No wonder they said, Lord, I believe. But if what I call faith is nonsense, help thou my own belief. I need help. And Jesus helped him. Men of God, let's trust God for this miracle service to bring us into new realms of glory. Let's trust God. Let's trust God. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter spiritually financially in grace in influence the path of the just shines shines don't allow people threaten you with their ignorance when people are ignorant they rob their ignorance on you and make you guilty for opening yourself up to all the dimensions of god as though you are sinning so if you open up yourself to be blessed financially they they give a body language that suggests that you too you are joining them in this thing receive the whole counsel of god it is beneficial for all of god to be seen in your life you embrace the power of god and hate his resources the pain that is on your child will tell on you and it will destroy your life i receive the whole counsel of god i receive the whole counsel if there is wealth i receive it if there is wisdom i receive it if there is grace i receive it everything that is on this table Sometimes you can be served a buffet and sometimes they can even help you to serve it and you say little of everything. Little of what? Everything. And we will never see. Now you join me. We know there's more that's found in you. And sing it from the depth of your heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Just one prayer point tonight. Lord, my heart and my mind and my body is open to receive everything everything go ahead and pray everything oh god you're trusting god for a healing miracle now is the time to release your faith you're trusting god for deliverance from all kinds of oppression now is the time to believe you're trusting god for a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit believe it for it you're trusting god for a change of results lord thank you i have evidences in my life but i need a higher level of results Lord, thank you for the prayer dimension, but I need a heavier grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amplify the gift of God in me. Amplify the grace of God in me. Amplify the 
supply of the spirit upon my life. I need to disciple nations. I need to become an influence over a system, over a structure for the sake of your glory. Pray, pray. Lord, I need a visitation upon my family. How forcible are right words. How forcible are right words. There is a compelling power that right words bring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to do it this way. We have to hurry up. We're just going to do four things this night. Number one, there will be a session of prophetic deliverance. I'll tell you what that means. I'll pray for people. I'll minister. But there are times that I'll just speak the word, the case, and then God will deal with that. Number two, I, I, if we have the time... The Lord may speak to one or two people. And then number three, we'll take time and minister the healing power of God to the sick. It's very important. And then number four, we'll have the time to pray on our requests. And then I prophesy and speak over everyone. And that will be it for the night. The, the, that time will come with impartations and all of that. I say this to you, especially for those of you who are coming for the first time, so that your heart can be open. It's going to be a flow all through. And I want you to participate with your heart. Let your heart be open. By the way, you can stand in for your loved ones. And then those connecting online from whatever nation of the world, there's no distance truly in the spirit. You can receive, you can believe, and then God can make this true in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a grace that I found myself releasing upon the body of Christ in this season. And that's what we're going to start with. The Lord, I don't know, God has been doing something in my life since January this year started. Is the grace for speed. This is what I want to release upon our lives. All through my meetings in Lagos, for every meeting, the Lord has instructed me to release that grace. Listen, no matter how many times you've heard me pray it, i like for your heart to be open. There is real speed that can come upon the saints in this season that you will run just just run like elijah are we together now i want to I, I want to talk to you especially for those outside the ushers will only do their best but they are limited usually when i pray this prayer and i release this grace you will find people running physically by the spirit of god there's nothing strange about it this is an operation of the spirit and i want to pray that grace right now from the depth of my heart you see that most of what we need in our lives is speed you will not complain about delay again when you have speed because it will not make any difference god has a system of forcing you to catch up and i want to pray those who are coming here for the first time let this be the first miracle that you receive in the mighty name of jesus now i stretch my hands at the count of three i declare the grace for speed i'm seeing fire coming on the feet of people at the count of three i release that anointing in all the overflows right now one my god two three receive that grace right now receive that anointing everywhere inside and outside i release that grace that grace for speed life comes to you and you begin to run to overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus christ i release speed speed inside outside I release speed. People are receiving that grace. Strange speed. Speed in ministry. Speed in your career. Receive it. God is releasing it upon you. No more delays. No more delays. By the spirit of the living God. No more delays. Online. Offline. Localized here. I stretch my hands and I prophesy that grace. Right now, people will begin to run by the Spirit. I'm seeing it in the Spirit. An energizing of the Spirit is coming on men and women. Speed! Speed! I prophesy speed! 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 Outside, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. 
by the roadside speed for you and for your family members by this grace I crush delay I crush delay I crush delay I crush delay I crush stagnation remaining in one position I judge the spirit and the force behind it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Lord is telling me he's still releasing that grace but now over families not just individuals you as a person may be moving forward but your family is under a strong yoke of stagnation I stretch my hands right now at the count of three may God use you as a point of contact to supply speed to your family members are you ready one two three receive that grace families families speed speed to the north speed to the south speed to the east speed to the west in the name of jesus speed to the middle belt i release you i release you i release you speed in the name of jesus i cause every power i cause every force by this grace and by this unction i release speed The Lord is showing me a purple robe. I'm seeing a purple robe in the spirit and I'm seeing it come on people. Not everybody, but there are specific people. And I believe purple in, in, in scripture is symbolic of royalty. It is a system of enthronement that is coming on certain people. Lord, I don't know where these people are. They came from miracle service, but I stretch my hands. May the anointing locate such people now and shift you into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Men robed in royalty, beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. for ashes beauty for ashes pay attention to what God is doing beauty for ashes hallelujah I'm seeing in a vision of the Lord and I'm seeing people the right legs being tied with something that looks like looks like a like a bag but tied and i'm seeing on it reproach that's what the lord is seeing reproach and the lord wants to take away that luggage of reproach it may not be for everybody but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that everything that represents a reproach in your life tonight here and now i release by the supply of the spirit the grace and i cause that reproach now I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. My God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus, man of God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, businessman, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace for biological fruitfulness like physical I'm not not just maybe financial and all of that real to, to dislodge barrenness whether it is for you or it's for someone connected to you it's time to receive it now I'm seeing the Lord is leading me to stand here just this room and I'm seeing an anointing locating people right here and taking away that yoke 
of barrenness. I stretch my hands. Whether it is for you or your family members, I'm just doing what the Lord is asking me to do. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. That if there is anyone within this road, among those standing, that is suffering any kind of barrenness, I come against it right now. I declare become a joyful mother of children, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to do something serious here. Now, this is an apostolic ministry and we are word-based. So whatever it is you do not understand, you rest in the fact that we work consistent with the Lord. Um, what, what God, I hope that you don't find it offensive. God is asking me to remove some money and just hold it and speak and release a grace for financial rest over people. This is an instruction. That's why I'm taking out time to explain so you don't misunderstand me. You will be surprised to see what happens. I will not ordinarily do that. No, we, we represent, we are people of integrity and this is not some superstitious manipulative thing. But we are in a season of fruitfulness and God is giving me an instruction. So I'm just going to do exactly what God is asking me to do. Just to be able to hold something and release that grace. And that you have the grace to receive you surprised to see what happens father i've obeyed you in childlike foolishness i stretch my hands right now let this mantle and this unction lord let it rest on your people at the count of four that in a way you will shift them to such dimensions of supernatural supplies get ready now one two three four receive that fire right now step into that level of strange abundance in the name of jesus christ i place a grace upon your life you may look weak but in the name of jesus let there be supplies from heaven let there be supplies from heaven let there be supplies from heaven in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus i provoke over your life the grace for strange financial supplies don't say you don't need it 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 in the name of jesus let it give you rest to serve the lord let it give you the fortitude to stop begging in the name of jesus and it will allow you to concentrate on the matters of the kingdom and of destiny i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ There are people entering realms right now in the spirit entering financial dimensions it is first spiritual before physical listen to me it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness let your faith come alive there are people entering dimensions and levels of grace and supplies and possibilities it's in you come dropping seeds out of ignorance or pressure please please i'm praying from my heart if you don't know what you are doing please don't feel guilty and don't feel under any kind of pressure whatsoever are we together let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters when god begins to speak over your life in an area is because he has seen what is going to befall men and like an ark he's creating an ark of gopher wood that represents safety many people in this year will languish financially i'm telling you this listen there will be a lot of cries that's why god is releasing this grace
there will be more people backsliding as a result of lack of resources than just a demonic attack please again i plead with you i plead with you in the name of jesus do not be under any pressure listen they did not keep a basket here for you to come and keep money i'm, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so i'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so we are committed to helping you experience god we're not playing games with anyone's destiny but i'm saying it again that there are people entering strange realms this is more than a miracle alert this is not miracle alert this is a realm is a is a dimension in the spirit and in the name of jesus i stand by this anointing again and i shift you step in step in step in step in step into this realm of surprise step into this realm of grace for your family for your family for your destiny step into this realm of grace it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found me it's in you lord it's in you lord I know there's more that's found me And we will never say we will never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you Hallelujah I'm seeing a woman outside The Lord is showing me a woman outside The power of God is coming upon that woman right now outside. I'm seeing that this is a woman of many sorrows. Her name is not given to me. But I'm seeing that this is a woman outside with all kinds of first financial issues and then family issues and anointing. A very strong anointing will come upon that woman. And the Lord is telling me that he is bringing upon people the spirit of revelation. Is, is a dimension of grace i want to pray that prayer right now father in the name of jesus christ i don't know who they are i don't know where they are but i stretch my hands i'm seeing fire like rings of fire just coming upon the eyes of people i release that grace right now help them please i release that grace right now blessed are you O lord Blessed are you, O Lord, and it is holy. Something is coming on you. But I can't, I don't I wish the more come, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the sea. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to go. But I can't deny my heart. I'm seeing like a letter and I'm seeing congratulations on it and the Lord is telling me it's a grace for jobs it's a grace for jobs please believe now it's a grace there are people who have been praying it and the Lord is asking me to count five just the, the number five and a grace will come for some you are already walking but God will lift you like the stars rising one two three four five receive that grace right now in the name of jesus i release that grace supernatural testimonies supernatural testimonies of jobs in the name of jesus supernatural testimonies for you and for your loved ones i don't care where the job must come from but i decree and i prophesy these jobs come to you speedily 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My hands are shaking. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. I'm stretching my hands. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. There are people that need to step into the healing ministry. The healing anointing. Right now I release that place. The healing anointing. Makato Sebekata. You can't be a man of God without the healing grace. The healing anointing. Receive it from ministry. Receive it from ministry. The healing anointing. Outside overflow one. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord. There are impartations of the healing grace. The healing grace. The healing grace. anointing receive it you need it in the name of jesus so you can take the healing power of jesus to the nation in the name of jesus christ you are carrying that grace bodily you are carrying that grace Evidential grace for you. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to minister deliverance. For those people, you bring them out now. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Lift your hands. We are going to pray. We are going to read these spirits there are forces that stand the destinies of people listen please especially if this is your first time coming ah. i'm seeing fire fire from ground up fire from ground that's from your feet rising up i'm going to count three listen for those people please i want them out here there is a strong fire of deliverance that is going to come upon you and clear the way for you to experience open doors and victory are you ready now please i want you to believe it at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus it's not a ritual and let me have all the people here ushers thank you father every devil of darkness that followed anyone here, any family, any situation here. In the name of Jesus, it's time for them to come out of their hiding place. I decree and I prophesy that at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, may the fire of God bring a separation between you and those influences. One, get ready. Two, three, shout Jesus. Come out of them now. I cast every devil in the name of Jesus and they shall cast out devils I command the spirit influences behind situations behind circumstances I command in the name of Jesus that they come out of their hiding place in the name of Jesus bring them out spirits of ancestry territorial ordinances that keep men in the same position that refuse to let them rise i come against you in the name of jesus bring them out in the name of jesus i'm seeing a sword and i know that sword is the word of god i cross by that sword let there be a separation that every force tying anyone's destiny you're going to shout Jesus again at the count of three be ye lifted all ye ancient doors one two three 
Let them go. In the name of Jesus, release their destinies. Covenant keeping God. Yahweh, covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Hands that I see tied in the realm of the spirit, many of you will feel physical fire on your hands. There will be a strange deliverance. That's why anything you do does not work. No matter if it's a business, it will fail. If it's a relationship, it will fail. Anything you lay your hands, there is a spirit that steals your joy. But right now, I challenge and I attack that spirit. Let the fire of God right now at the count of three separate you from that influence. One, two, three. Let them go now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your The yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, I break it now. The yoke of bad luck. Receive, I'm breaking someone free from this yoke of bad luck. Makato se sekete lekete yakata. Shabranda kato sana kato skele bakaratos. Eketo skete kete kete kete. Karusa siyama kando shala makata. I break you free from the yoke of bad luck. In the name of Jesus. Bad luck. It works well for others until you come. And then something strange just happens. All those under the anointing here. I arrest this spirit. And at the count of three. Every devil you will patch your load. And every trouble you have brought to this destiny. And go. I speak as one sent by the anointing. At the count of three. Leave one. Two. Three. Go. 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 Out of their lives, out of their destinies, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad to pray for the sick. Who is Janet? Janet, Janet, I hear a name, Janet, Janet, there's, there's no time we have, Janet, please don't enjoy anybody, are you Janet, stand up, I had the name Janet, please don't tell lies, don't embarrass yourself, if you are not Janet, go back, Janet,
Where are you from? In the name of Jesus, look at me. I will pray for everybody, but I will pray for you. Huh? Look at me, look at me. Don't close your eyes. Your family is under serious attack. Uh, where are they? Where are your family members? They're in Zaria. Zaria, yes. Go and tell them that the Lord is bringing deliverance for your entire Amen. family. Amen. Huh? Not only... Go and tell your family members that the Lord is taking away the reproach Amen. from your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I may not be able to talk to everyone, but... Ah. I'm still seeing that thing I saw in the vision. That thing tied on the legs, written reproach, reproach, reproach. And the Lord is taking it away right now. In the name of Jesus, taking away reproach. This lady, tap that lady holding her hands for me. This, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing like oil come upon you. And God is saying he's shifting you. To a new level of favor in the name of jesus i decree and i prophesy by the spirit over you 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 all of you standing here for time's sake i'm going to pray for you one of you um the power of god is going to come on one of you the moment that happens i'll pray for everybody i'm seeing one person one of you the Lord is telling me that the anointing is coming on that person. Not only is God bringing personal spiritual revival to you, God is opening doors of opportunity. Lord, where is that one person? I decree and declare when that one person is identified and then I just pray for all of you in general. I'm seeing someone in around the media where media people are and the Lord is saying you are stepping into your season of laughter. And just around that vicinity of the media I stretch my hands may the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus like a mighty rushing wind rest upon the individuals within that vicinity in the name of Jesus that person must enter into the, the reality of this prophecy I'm back to you people in front in Jesus name I decree and declare whoever that one person is may that anointing and that grace come upon you you will never 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 be the same the power of god will come upon that one person the moment that happens then i'll pray for everybody it's just the instruction god is giving me in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands towards all of you by faith and in the spirit i declare for whatever reason it is that god brought you out here i declare i place the word of god upon your situation and in the name of jesus i declare that you return with testimonies in the name of jesus my dear look at me this lady wearing dark come god bless you you can go back to your seat all of you hold my hands hold it with both of your hands where are you coming from asaba. from asaba yes, the lord is saying i should tell you that this will be the beginning of your days of glory Amen. Oh, this will be the beginning of your days of glory Step into it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. We raise your banner. We shine your light so We sing in honor of you. Lord, we raise your banner. We shine your light so ladies every spirit that appears to you in dreams sleeping with you in dreams and destroying your destiny anything good that is about i'm praying for everybody but i'm hearing ladies in my spirit to deliver ladies from this spirit good things are about to happen to you and then you have a dream and all kinds of spirits molest you and that's it i'm praying i'm seeing 23 there are more than this but particularly 23 people the lord is bringing strange deliverance for them right now wherever they are 
in the name of Jesus, may the fire of the Holy Spirit from inside this auditorium to the overflows outside online, let there be complete emancipation for such people. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, this lady wearing pink, lift your hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I'm seeing the Lord take something out of your body. We're about to pray for the sick. But the Lord is taking something out of your body. That's why I told you to shout that name. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the power of infirmity is broken over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, our time is gone. We're going to be very, very fast. Are we together? Um, if you are trusting God, listen carefully. Whether you are in overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, if what you have, please listen, if what you have is a terminal disease, a terminal disease is something that is akin to a death sentence. Are we together? Like a death sentence. You know what I mean. I don't have to mention names. Please, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, be fair, be honest. I will want to minister by myself to you. Now, number two, those in here, you can come out and you are trusting God for healing for you or for your loved ones. Overflow one, please to your projector stand. Overflow two, same thing to your projector stand. Overflow three, to your projector stand. So if you do not belong to this category that I particularly requested to come, please, God is here. Make sure you are sincere. Make sure you are honest. I'd like all of you to come stand. I'm about to minister. And there will be men and women of God scattered across. Those by the roadside, I don't know what overflow that will be. Let's say an extension, overflow four. You will join overflow two. And then there will be men of God ministering by the Spirit. Please, because of time, you do not just a touch is enough we're functioning together under a corporate anointing so you don't have to particularly except if they have a personal prophetic word for you you don't have to just waylay them and harass them and say look this and that and that just stand by faith as soon as they pray for you you go back to your seat you check yourself you must return with your testimony if it's a medical report whatever it is i'd like you to just come believing hallelujah praise the lord in the name of jesus i decree and declare that together as a team under the anointing of the holy spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online we agree that this touch becomes a touch that will birth your miracle and your testimony in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now as as we pray for you worship team please help us whilst we are doing that how many of you have your prayer requests you have your prayer request please wave it so while this is happening usher's pr department please join them uh and then if, if if there's a need for that maybe the protocol department can help let's collate the prayer requests very quickly so that we can speak over it immediately we'll be very fast please um dear people of god let's be very fast as we minister to them so that we can um finish up on time Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you standing here, I want you to believe there is a God in heaven and that this touch becomes a supernatural touch. Doesn't matter what the situation is, release your faith in Jesus' name. God bless you. Um, I will just, just stand on them because of time. Please, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, it's not a ritual. You can wave it and an usher or someone will quickly, please, if you're under the anointing, you can wave it or tell them where it is and they'll pick it for you. Please, quickly, quickly. Those online connect by faith. Stretch your hands here and let's pray. Father, we decree and we declare. We just have a minute for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands and prophesy. Libras, Kadabrando, Shari, Katosia, brother. The same way we are standing on these requests in the name of Jesus. This is establishing your dominion above every challenge, above every situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Ebrogabo shalakos kebronde kerosa tibrakato shalabros. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, every impossible situation here, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. We turn it around, believe, believe, believe. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. This is a strategy that the Lord delivered to us. A representation of your pain, your stress, that which attempts to challenge God over your life. No matter how many times we prophesy, we are limited. And this is an opportunity to have everyone. It's like tabling your heart before God. There is a God that answers prayers. This is not a ritual. That's why we bring it before him. And let me tell you, we have, we have heard of marvelous testimonies from this. And I believe that in this year of extraordinary fruitfulness, that this that you have dropped here before the Lord, in the name of Jesus, as you have brought it before him, it will never, if it's a tragic situation, it will never return to you again. And if it is a request that must appear in your life, then I decree and declare. I don't know how it will happen. Like the prophet said, you may not see wind. You may not see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water. I prophesy, I decree and declare. In the name that is above all names, by the God of all grace, your answer will find its way to your life. Even if it means happening through your enemy or happening to a man that has vowed not to help you, may my God make it happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy to you that these Egyptians you see today, that you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. For many of you, even before this month is over, in the name of Jesus, you will tick your list one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. In the name of Jesus, we decree it so by the power of the Holy Spirit. We decree it so by the blood of the Lamb. We decree it so by the word of God. We establish it. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you now. This will be um the first time we're doing this in a miracle service for the year why do i round up the services with a prophetic word because i believe in the power of prophecy and it is also a spiritual mechanism to send the word to you wherever you are are we together now you don't have to be called as an individual the word of god comes is yours for you to receive and then you see the creative potentials in that word. People's lives have changed some overnight just because a word came and now it's about to come again. Let me tell you, do you know that I listen to the miracle service messages myself and I receive all the prayers from the man of God? Just because I'm the vessel being used by God does not exempt me from receiving too. I listen to the messages and God is my witness. I follow every prayer with all my heart sincerely. Are we together now? So believe this and you will see it work in your life. It is only what you believe that will work. Are we together? Favor like never before. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from this night. May it follow you like a shadow follows a man. I say it again, favor like never before from tonight. May he follow you in the name of Jesus Christ. Strange favor, strange favor, activating possibilities in your life. Strange favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every overdue issue in your life, an issue that has stayed long, beyond necessary in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that this is the season of strange settlement over your life may my God the God of all grace establish and settle you in every area in the
the name of Jesus Christ every long standing issue comes to an end now everything that misrepresents you before your helpers the spirit that creates a bad image in the presence of those who can help and lift you there is such an operation of darkness that when men desire to help you something happens around your life in the name of jesus it comes to an end now in the name of jesus it comes to an end now i pray for you in in this season you need wisdom not sophia not the wisdom of men not the princes of this world but the wisdom that comes from above that is accompanied with mighty works it says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that none of your adversary can gainsay nor resist i decree and declare receive this strange order of wisdom receive this supernatural dimension of wisdom in the name of jesus christ the level of anointing that you must be upgraded to in this season so that the hand of god will be evident on your life i stretch my hands let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now if you are in ministry let there be a baptism of that anointing now for every leader here let there be a baptism of that anointing now everyone do for promotion your place of work or your standing in for your your loved ones i decree and declare we announce and we establish their rising in the mighty name of jesus christ the spirit that continues to minister to you that you will die and that you will not see the end of this year you will die during election you will die during this and that a crisis will happen and you'll be a victim of this i silence the voice of that spirit now i decree and declare whether by road whether by air whether through the operation of the wickedness in men remain ever exempted from death in the name of jesus may you be too late for tragedy if it will cause shame you will not be found there if it will cause pain you will not be found there in the name of jesus christ I decree that whatever it is you're involved with whether it's your career the works of your hands your business whatever it is that God uses as a channel to increase your influence to bless people and to empower you in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it Some of you at the beginning of the year your prayer life is already down it's too early your word life already down no appetite to study scripture no appetite to pray whether you sleep by eight o'clock or by ten you will still wake up by eight the next day this one is a spirit it's no longer tiredness anything you don't have control over has been hijacked over by satan god gives his beloved sleep it is true but slumber is of the devil there is a difference between slumber and sleep one of the differences is control there are some of us even if you sleep by two in the afternoon you will wake up by eight or nine the next day until good things finish before you wake up it's a spirit i curse it from your life now. you will go to bed when you want to and you will wake up when you need to in the name of jesus christ god has declared over us but let me declare again over our finances 
please i will continue to see this they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo I decree and declare this is the season that you step into overflow in the name of Jesus Christ no one connected to this grace no one connected to this vision goes down financially and I pray for you those of us who have little groups, ministries, fellowships that were helping and building other believers. And for a long time you have seen that it's like your grace is pecked at a level. Nothing new, nothing fresh. I decree, after this miracle service, step into a new order of spiritual operation. Whatever needs to be restored in your life before February, restoration restoration to bring back i command it to your life now in the name of jesus anywhere we are not praying for crisis during this election but in the name of jesus any pocket of reprisal or whatever that will arise by the finger of God may you be far from that environment may your children be far from that environment may your parents and your loved ones be far from that environment whatever it is that you have asked the Lord that I have not mentioned here but is a desperate desire in your heart I release my faith with you as touching the grace given unto me in the name of Jesus let it be turned to your testimony two more prayer points may the spiritual fire on your altar the fire that once called people to you the fire that was responsible for your honor the fire that was responsible for your influence whatever made that fire go down or blew it out in the name of Jesus we fan your coals back to flames whatever has shot your appetite for knowledge you used to be a student of knowledge you buy books you are online learning and growing but for some reason whether carelessness complacency or just an attack now there is no appetite to know and to grow i declare that after this night may the grace that causes men to seek god and seek after truth may that grace be released upon you Let me add one more prayer no matter where your loved ones are on this earth whether in this country or outside of this country within this continent or outside of this continent whether in health or not whether following this service or not we decree and declare may the hand the help and the favor of God locate them and even as you are receiving and celebrating testimonies May your loved ones have the same experience in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we glorify you. We bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm walking in the reality of every prophetic word. Thank you. I receive every grace. I receive every word in the name of Jesus except if you're under the anointing I like us to honor in one minute we will always do this we're a ministry that believes in soul winning we believe in giving people an opportunity to meet Jesus and um, even though our time is gone necessity is laid upon us to give someone an opportunity to find God's saving grace tonight. Let's minimize distraction, please. 
and so for all those here sitting overflow one overflow two overflow three uh, the roadside those connecting online and those in the main auditorium you are here tonight and the holy spirit is ministering to you that you need to make this year different you need to give god an opportunity to start afresh with you could be that you have given your heart to the lord but you need that assurance you truly need to rededicate your life to say lord i'm handing over everything we have just a minute or two for you if you are sitting in overflow one two and the roadside and in here i would request you to come just stand in front here and then those at overflow three for the sake of time and distance i would request that you just walk to your projector stand and then those following online you can just follow me as i lead you through this prayer two minutes the lord is speaking to you please summon the courage arise let's encourage them make your way to the front god bless you those coming from outside please hurry up clear the way for them please god bless you god bless you there's nothing compulsory in the kingdom but the benefits are worth the while make your way quickly someone outside is saying apostle i want to come but i'm a bit ashamed there's nothing to be ashamed of make your way run to jesus if you're coming please come quickly there are contemplations happening in your spirit while you are sitting down you know you need to be here the devil will not ask you to be here the fact that there is a prompting to be here is a sign that the holy spirit is ministering to you win that war get up from your seat and come apostle what if my colleagues see me it's good they see you so that they become witnesses of your transformation make your way quickly we have just one more minute for you for those of you clapping in the name of jesus this is how many will honor you because you are committing yourself to encourage those who are coming to jesus hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much i understand that in the day and age that we live in it takes a lot of courage to be very vocal on a decision like this we live in a time where people pride themselves in being sarcastic they pride themselves in laughing at others especially when you are doing something spiritual jesus said whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away i honor and i truly celebrate all of you for the courage to stand even in the presence of everyone may i request that you just lift your right hand as a sign of surrender and repeat this truthfully after me say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i hand over my heart my mind my body my life to your lordship i declare that you are lord of my life i declare that i exchange my life for your life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life the power of sin of satan of the flesh is broken over my life now and forever amen keep your hands lifted jesus thank you for these precious ones they have made a decision for many of them the first time for many of them securing their eternal destinies i decree and i declare that the grace that helps people to stand to thrive and to excel in this kingdom may that grace come upon you i open you to the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of the word that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified i plant in you tonight a fresh hunger and passion for the things of the spirit in the name of jesus christ and i declare i dissociate you from anything that can impede your spiritual growth may you enjoy the help of god in jesus name i pray amen and amen thank you dear brothers and sisters let me request that you follow there's a lady waving her hands please all of you follow her in concert she will lead you 
to a committee that will welcome you more formally on our behalf. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.